welcome to ICA. So today we are going to see about the important questions and answers. So those were related to the subjects of building materials. So uh, in overseer exchange, overseer exams, what are the questions we have expected? So that questions we are going to see today and we are going to discuss about the questions and the answers in the subject of building materials. Okay. So first question, percentage of silica in a good brick earth lies between. So what is the question in the sense, this question which is related to the brick. So in that brick, what are the things? Percentage of silica. So how, what are the ingredients are present in the brick earth? So we can take it as a, a slim. So a slim, it is a, these are the ingredients present in the brick earth. So what are the thing? A. That is alumina, silica, lime, iron oxide, magnesia. So these are the ingredients present in the briquette. So what is your question is percentage of a silica in a good briquette. So these are the ingredients as alumina, silica, lime, iron oxide and magnesia. And how many percentages each of the ingredients are present in the brick? So alumina is a 20 to 30 percentage and silica is a 50 to 60 percentage. Lime should be less than 5 percentage. Iron oxide is 5 to 6 percentage. In magnesia is 1 to 2 percentage or 2 to 4 percentage. So it has a two, ra two ranges. In case both should be in the option, we have to choose 1 to 2 percentage as the answer for magnesia. So these are the percentage of, percentage of ingredients present in the brick. So alumina is 20 to 30 percentage. Silica is 50 to 60 percentage. Lime is less than 5 percentage, iron oxide is 5 to 6 percentage and magnesia is. So these are the ingredients why present in the brickers. What is the purpose? So alumina, we can tell it as a, this is the major or principal constituents of a brick earth. So this is a principal constituent of a brick earth. So principal or chief. So according to the percentage present in the brick, silica is the highest percentage. So we are telling this as a major. So that is a different main constituent. This is a alumina. This is main principal or chief constituent is alumina. Silica is a major constituent. Lime is less than 5 percentage only. It acts as a flux. So iron oxide and the magnesia. Both this give color to the brick. So both the things gives a color to the brick. There is a difference in the color. Iron oxide gives a red color to the brick. Magnesia gives a yellow tint to the brick. So these are the ingredients present in the brick earth. So what are the ingredients present in the brick earth? Alumina, silica, lime, iron oxide and magnesia. And how much percentage each of the things are present? 20 to 30, 5 to 60, less than 5 percentage, 5 to 6 percentage. Magnesia is 1 to 2 percentage and also 2 to percentages. Out of this both should be in the option we have to choose a 1 to 2 percentage. So what is the answer for the percentage of a Silica in the good bracket. So silica range is a 50 to 60 percentage. The answer is option C. Next. The minimum crushing strength of a first class brick should not be less than. So we have to choose about the crushing strength of a brick. So crushing strength of the first class brick. So how many types of bricks are there? So normally we can classify the brick into. So three classes. One is a underburned burned bricks then overburned so three classifications of bricks are there so this is classified as a burned overburned burned underburned that is in the sense depending upon the burning temperature of a brick so how much is the burning temperature so Burning temperature of a brick is 
1100 degree Celsius. So, 1100 degree Celsius is a burning temperature of a brick. So, we can understand uh, normal. Underburned means which is less than 1100 degree Celsius. Burned in the sense a brick can be burned at a correct temperature of 100 de uh, degree and, uh, 1100 degree Celsius. Overburned is more than 1100 degree Celsius. So, this is underburned in the sense it is less than 1100 degrees celsius what is it then this brick can be dried in the sunlight in presence of sunlight so it is called as a sun dried bricks So, this is the brick which can be uh, burned at the temperature of 1100 degrees Celsius, which can be used for uh, building purposes. So, it can be classified into the three classes, first class, second class and third class. So, another classes is there, fourth class. This fourth class of brick is called as a overburned bricks. So according to that classes, the three classes of a brick. So according to that, we can fix the crushing strength of a brick. So crushing strength of a first class of brick is a 14 kilo newton per meter squared. Sorry. First class of brick is a 14 newton per mm squared. So, this is the actual crushing, uh, crushing strength of a uh, first class brick. Here they have given the option as a 150 kilogram per centimeter squared. So, we have to do the thing, check about the minimum crushing strength. So, this is actual crushing strength. Minimum crushing strength is 10.5 Newton per mm squared. So, 10.5 is the minimum crushing strength of a first class brick. So, the answer is here 105 is present. The 105 kilogram per centimeter squared is the minimum crushing strength of a first class. So, what is in the second class bricks? Second class, 14 is the actual crushing strength of a first class brick. So, second class is as like as a divided by 2, 7 to 14. So, in that what happened to the third class brick is a same half into 3.5 to 7 Newton per mm squared. Alright. So, this is the answer is 10.5 kilogram per centimeter squared. The bricks used for lining of furnaces. So, what is meant by lining of furnaces? So, what is which is the brick used for lining of furnaces? So, we have seen the underburned bricks, overburned bricks, refractory. Underburned, overburned, and none of this. These three uh, refractory bricks. So, three options are underburned, we know it can be burned at the temperature of less than 1100 degrees Celsius. And then overburned as a more than. So, both should mod me. We can this is uh, this is normally we can use for the building purposes we can use the overburned bricks as a for the purpose of aggregate so if this is a sun dried bricks sun dried bricks is, uh, we cannot be able to use for the furnaces so we can use the answer as a refractory bricks so what is meant by refractory bricks means So, these bricks can be made from fire clay. So, this brick is also called as a fire bricks. So, the refractory bricks are normally made from the fire clay. So, this brick is also called as a fire bricks. So, it is made up of fire clay. So, it has the capacity to resist high temperature. So, refractory bricks has the capacity to resist the high temperature. So, this bricks can be used for lining of furnaces, chimneys, etc. So, the color of this refractory brick is a yellowish white or white in color. So, the color of the refractory brick is yellowish white or whitish color. Next question. Swelling of a brick. So, what is meant by swelling of a brick? So, uh, it is also known as what? Swelling of a brick means... Swelling mentioned in the bricks, the swelling in mentioned the brick expands. So, 
so the brick expands that is called as a we are mentioning the swelling of a brick so how it can be uh, swelling happened in the sense the due to the presence of carbonaceous matter presence of carbonaceous matter so in that brick So carbonaceous matters are present in the uh, bricks. So what happened means the carbon content is present in the ground. While heating what happened? So the carbon, uh, these are the carbon as a gas. So the gas will form. So due to the heating, we have to heat. So due to the heating process, what happened? Evolution of gases. The gases will be evaluated. So at that time what happened means there is a black color formation will be forms on the brick black color formation will be forms on the brick at the same time what happened the cracks are there so due to the presence of carbonaceous matter the while heating what happened evolutions of gases will be formed at the time in uh, outer surface of the brick everything will be the black color formation at the time due to the heating what happened the crack will be there the cracks formation what happened the expansion of a brick happened that is called as a swelling of a bricks these overall process is also called as a bloating so this process is called as a bloating that's why swelling of brick is called as a bloating so what is meant by chuff means rain due to the raindrops so due to the raindrops falling on the brick it cannot able to be dried so that defect is called as a chuffs efflorescence means formation of white or grey patches white or grey patches on the brick surface that is called as a efflorescence so uh, the swelling uh, bloating is called as a swelling of a bricks so how it happens due to the presence of a carbonaceous matter okay next a thin pourable suspension of slaked lime in water is known as so what is meant by slaked lime in a water so what is the uh, that is a process involved in this thing so what is that means limestone is a calcium carbonate this calcium carbonate is heated at a temperature of 800 degree celsius what happened calcium oxide and then carbon dioxide so this calcium oxide this is a this process is called as a calcination so this is this calcium oxide is again uh, added uh, water then finally calcium hydroxide will be formed so this is the process involved in this process is called as a slaking so this is a process involved in the uh, lime process so for initially limestone is heated at a temperature of 800 degrees celsius we will get the calcium oxide this can be added to the that is called as a slaked lime in a water so this is called as a, this process adding of water in the calcium oxide we get a calcium hydroxide this lime is called as a slaked lime so this process is called as a slaking so adding of water in the calcium oxide though what is the, uh, the water content amount of water required so we'll get in the slaked lime what adding of water in the sense so how much amount of water is added to me required amount of water is 32 percentage of dry weight of calcium oxide we have to add the 32 percentage of dry weight of calcium oxide in case of in field condition what we have to do the two to three times the cao so if it is so this is the actual condition so we have to add the con for correct proportion we have to add only the 32 percentage of dry uh, dry weight of cao in normal condition in field condition we have to add the two to three times the cao in case in adding excess of this limit x 
excess of this limit 2 to 3 times the COO what happen means because normally in the sense if you add correct proportion of water then only will get a correct uh, correct uh, material so or else there is a formation of a slurry formation will be there it is in the maybe in the colloidal condition so as like is in the lime if you adding more than this limit what happen there is a pourable suspension will be formed Pourable suspension will be formed. So that is why they are mentioning this pourable suspension of slaked lime. So what is called as a slaked lime? In calcium oxide, we are adding a water, then we are getting the calcium hydroxide. Thus, calcium hydroxide is called as a slaked lime. So in this, water is added to the calcium oxide. That process is a slaking. So how much amount of water is required to add for the, the hydro calcium hydroxide in a perfect condition? So that is in the normal condition, 32% of weight of calcium oxide but in the field condition we have to add the 2 to 3 times the CAO so if it exceeds the limit of 2 to 3 times the CAO what happened the pourable it is in the form like it is a colloidal that form is called as a pourable suspension of a lime so this is also called as a milk of lime so answer is the pourable suspension of slaked lime in water is known as a milk of lime okay next one is the arch so the inner surface of arch so what is meant by arch arch should be like this this is called as a arch so in that so arch can be formed in the condition of this is to be there it has a two supports So the support is normally called as a support name is abutment. So this is a surface that is the, this is a arch the in that is it has a two curve right arch should be like this so it uh, it this is this and this has a surface so three terms will be I will say so what is inner curve this is called as a inner curve that is inner curve of an arc is called as a intrados outer curve is called as a extrados so we are considering this as a curve so it has a two curve one inner curve and also the outer curve so both should be said inside uh, that is a building condition stones or bricks can be used inside to fill that surface that is called as a this as a this is a arch in the sense the inner surface of an arc that is called as this area so this is inner surface of an arc is called as a So this is an area, the inner surface of an arc is called as a soffit. So the inner surface, no, that is a confusion will happen whether it is intradose or soffit. Because that's why they are, the extra dose is not in the option, that is why we don't have the discussion. Intradose and then soffit. Intradose means an inner curve of an arc. So in an arc, there is a curve two curves will be there that is inner curve of an arc is called as an intradose inner surface of an arc is called as a soffit so don't confuse this if there is a difference between intradose is the this curve is called as an intradose there is a surface will be there in that in that inner surface is called as an what is called as a soffit next one so that is the first user and springing level on the other side of an arch and it is immediately adjacent to the skew back. So what is the thing? What is meant by user? What is meant by springing level? So these are the terms will be there. So what is meant by the user? So this is I said arc right previously. So this is an arc. It has an two things. So what I said, this support is called as an end support is called as an apportment. We should have a clear about the term also. End support of an arc. Apportment is a not a support of an arc. That is an end support of an arc. Clear? End 
support of an arc is a abutment. And then what we have seen? That is an inner curve as a inner curve as an intrados. This is extrados. These are the term we have studied. And next one is the inner surface is soffit. Then this is the arc. These arcs can be filled by stones or brick masonry. That is what is meant by brick stones or brick masonry that is bonded with the mortar. Right. This can be filled by stone or brick. Stone or brick bonded with the mortar. So this can be filled by this. So this arch. I said arch can be filled by stone or brick. So this is not in the stone doesn't in not in the this shape right. So in that arc the particular shape will be there. So it should be in the shape of wedge shaped. So how it should be that. It should be like this. This is called as a wedge shaped. Right. So what is meant by arc? Wedge shaped units. The arrangement of wedge shaped units of stone or brick masonry to forming an arc. So this wedge shaped unit is called as an oozes. clear oozer that is called as a oozer the wedge shaped unit is called as an oozer next thing springing level on the arc so what is in the sense so this is a, a, a apportment this is an arc right this is a end support and then uh, end support of an arc from so the arc will be start so this is a point right the arc starts at the first point. Uh, arc starts at the fit. That is a support. So where the arc which rests. So this is a point. This The arc where it rests. This is called as an springing point. This is called as a springing point. So each arc has a two springing points. Because two supports will be there. So two springing point. The where arc starts and where ends. That is a where arc rests at that point. That is called a springing point. There is a two springing points will be there. It can be joined by one line. That is called as a springing line. Clear? This is called as a spring line. That is... A what is called as a, that is a first oozer and then springing level on the other side of arc and it is immediately. So this is a first oozer is we can normally called as an springer. Right? Because next to the, that is a, within the first, the point where the arc starts and arc ends. That is called as a springing point. That is a first oozer is called as an springer. Same. So dash is the wedge shaped of a unit at a crown of an arc. So wedge shaped units. We have to see only the arc. So this is. So these are the. Wedge shaped units. So this is called as an. Uses. In the what happened means in arc the middle point as in has the highest point. So it is uh, arc it should be arc should be like this the middle point is the just highest point. Why it should be in the highest point is there any uh, structurally important no. It is the highest point is just for aesthetical appearance. The point is called as a, that is the highest point is called as a, this highest point of an arc is called as a crown. So that is a highest point of an arc is called as a crown. So this is called as a crown. So what happened in the sense means wedge shaped unit at the crown of an. So this is wedge shaped unit means oser. The oser present at the crown means what is meant by crown? Highest point of an arc. The highest 
highest point of an arc is called as an what does it mean that is called as a crown so in that arc that the center point is it should be in the highest point only is there any structure can know it is just for a aesthetical appearance only that is highest point of an arc is a crown so what is your question the user which is present at the highest point that is why these are the user present at the first uh, highest point this is usually called as an key so uh, that is the question the wedge shaped unit at the crown of an work this question can be ca called as a, the user which is placed at the highest point of an arc that both should be in the same answer the answer is a key next the bonding bricks are lied at any angle other than 0 degree or 90 degree is called what so that is means other than 0 degree or 90 degree that is called as an inclined so brick which can be placed in the inclined manner that is called as a ragging bond so that is called as a ragging bond so question should be direct question bonding rays are laid at any angle other than 0 degree or 90 degree or else the bricks are laid at an inclined position that is also called as a ragging bond there are three types one is a diagonal bond another one is a herring bone bond And another one is a zigzag bound. So this is that three types of a ragging bond will be there. Diagonal, herring bond and a zigzag bond. Next, which bond is suited for walls which are 2 to 3, four, 2 to 4 thick walls? That is why. So the thing is called as a uh, 2 to 4 thick it is called as a so ragging bond is placed at the inclined. The, in the three types I said the diagonal and then herring and also the zigzag so this is answer is called as a diagonal bond what is meant by diagonal bond means stitches are placed at the corners on that side so in that perpendicular to the stitches Headers will be placed. So, with respect to the thing, we just 45 degree inclination. This 45 degree inclination, we are placing a brick. So, this is called as a diagonal ball. This diagonal ball is only adopted for 2 to 4 wall thickness. Next, quantity of fuel required to calcinate the 1 kilo newton of a limestone is. So, a quantity of fuel required to calcinate the 1 kilo newton of a limestone. So, 1 kilo newton of limestone, we just calcinated means heating the limestone, it converted into the form of a climb, uh, quick climb, uh, that is calcium oxide. So, how much amount of uh, lime, uh, how much amount of fuel should be needed for 1 kilo newton of limestone? That is a 70, 60 newton. The portion of a wall between the phasing and the backing. So, what is meant by phasing and then for, uh, what is meant by back, backing in the sense, uh, though phasing in the sense, uh, the wall which is exposed to the atmospheric condition, that is called as a phasing, backing in means uh, the wall which is not exposed to the atmospheric condition, it should be the inner side of the wall, inner side of the building, that is called as a phasing. So, what is meant by phasing? What is meant by backing? So, exposed to the atmospheric condition is called phasing, not exposed to atmospheric condition is called as a backing. That is a portion of the wall between the facing and the backing that is called as an hatting.
that is called as a hearting. The crushing test of a, a stones, what is the size of the specimen to be used? The cr for crushing strength of a stones, why this test is needed? This note is for testing the compressive strength of a stone by using a So what is the size of a specimen uh, specimen which can be used to used for the find out the crushing strength is 40 by 40 by 40 mm. The answer is 40 by 40 by 40 mm. The process of banning limestone to redness in contact with the air is called as water. So what I said earlier I said the what is the process in for the process of here burning the limestone. So limestone is calcium carbonate. It can be burning at the temperature of 800 degrees Celsius. It can be converted into the. This is called as a. So this is called as. Quick lime or. Caustic lime. So this process is called as a so this process is called as a calcination. Conversion of limestone into the calcium oxide. The process of burning limestone to redness in contact with air. So that is a direct question. That is process is called as an calcination a rocks formed by the gradual deposition so rocks formed by the gradual deposition means deposition of the rocks so what is the process involved normally the rocks can be classified into the three types igneous uh, metamorphic and igneous sedimentary and then metamorphic rocks first rock is a igneous rocks then second one is a sedimentary third one is a metamorphic rocks so what is the process involved in the sedimentary rock is the, the igneous rocks has formed igneous rocks formed so after that what happened with respect to the weathering agents what happened disintegration or break the rock will be happen so these rocks can be so disintegrate and then uh, break the rock it can be the igneous rocks the igneous rocks has formed so due to some weathering agents what happened the rocks can be break or disintegrate and then these rocks can be with respect to the transported by wind So the rocks which are formed, uh, the formed by magma is, uh, the, is called igneous rocks. These igneous rocks are with respect to the weathering agents, the break or disintegration happens. So these rocks can be with respect to the wind transported to one place from this origin, origin place to place of origin to uh, move from the another place and deposit at that place. So uh, with respect to transported by with respect to the wind it can be moved to the another place and deposited at the other place. Moved from place of origin to other place that is uh, the, uh, that uh, that rocks this rocks can, uh, deposited other place and then accumulated. So that rocks are called as a sedimentary rocks so that is called as a rocks formed by the gradual deposition 
that is called as a sedimentary rocks so sometimes question will be rocks formed by the gradual deposition of pre-existing rocks thus both will be said pre-existing rocks is called as a igneous rocks from the igneous rocks that is a due to the weathering agents a break or disintegration will happen so according to that this this rocks can be moved from trans, by the wind it can be moved from one place to from the place of origin to another place and that place deposited all the rocks will be deposited so from the place it changes the from the place of origin to another place and that deposited so that is called as a, that type of rocks are called as a deposit uh, sedimentary rocks most weather resisting metamorphic rocks are the quartzite so this is an example of a metamorphic rock so what is the answer the most weather resisting metamorphic rock are called as a quartzite litharge so what is meant by litharge this is also lead monoxide so litharge is called as a lead monoxide it has a two properties in the two building materials we can uh, this question will be there so litharge is a lead monoxide this can be in the plastic uh, in that paint commonly used dryer this is in paint in that paint uh, the in that paint uh, uh, portion what is uh, litharge is used? It is a commonly used dryer. So, I'm going to question where you are. The answer is a litharge. And second thing is a... In second one is in the glass. Potash. Lead glass. So, litharge is a... Main composition. So that is why litharge is a lead monoxide. What is meant by litharge is meant by litharge is a lead monoxide. It has, it has used in the two type of building materials. One is a paint, another one is a glass. In that paint, we can litharge as a commonly used dryers. And in the glass, the potash lead glass, which has the main composition. Next, dash is used to indicate the pieces of broken glass or waste glass. This is answer is Colored. So, colored as a so broken glass at the time of so direct meaning the broken glass is called as a gullet. Chromatic glass, the chromatic glass where we are you, you can use in the ICU and the meeting rooms. So chromatic glass are normally used in the ICU and also the meeting rooms. Which of the following is added to glass in order to make its color green? So if you want to get the color green in the sense, which one we can should be added? Chromium sexoxide. So in that that green should be in the what color? That is a emerald green. emerald green so we can add the cobalt oxide will get a black color so magnesium oxide will get a violet color so uh, which color which uh, ingredient is added to the glass to get in the color green that green is called also in the emerald green and so it is chromium sexoxide or else means uh, oxides of chromium both are same what causes a dry rot in timber so, which uh, beetle, white ants, both are should be in the insects. So, that is why uh, it won't be there. Not in a very dry rot will be happen due to the presence of fungus. Dry rot will be happened by the fungus. This dry rot may mainly happened due to the unseasoning. So, it is not in the good seasoning of a timber, dry rot will be happen. 22. Dash is a defects indicated by red or yellow tinge in wood. The answer is a droxiness. So, don't confuse about the droxiness and the froxiness. So, droxiness means a white patches, white spots. So, there is a red or yellow tinge is called as a froxiness. And also the reddish brown
so frocksiness means a red and a red, a red or yellow tinge and wood also and reddish brown color formation around the pith so in that pith the so pith is the central portion it around the pith the what is that that red color that is a reddish brown color formation will be there both should leads to the frocksiness or else another thing is what are the another uh, the another causes or another reasons to begin the frocksiness means it grow in a marshy soil and second thing is a So during seasoning there is a poor ventilation so bore should be the reasons leads to the frocksiness also so what is meant by frocksiness means a red or yellow tinge on the wood and also the reddish or brown color formation around the pith bore should be in the frocksiness and this is the reasons to come a frocksiness defect will be here diagonal grain if a defect formed due to the improper sawing so sawing means what is meant by sawing means conversion so uh, due to this process we can convert the timber into the industrial form of you converted the wood into the industrial forms of the timber that process is called as a sawing so due to the improper sawing so this diagonal grain is also called as a sawing defect so sawing defect so due to the improper sawing what happened so diagonal marks are formed on the thing so there is a so in that wood or timber diagonal marks are formed like this that's why we are telling that's a diagonal grain due to the improper sawing this is called as a sawing defect due to the improper sawing that is a diagonal marks are formed on the wood that's why it is called as a diagonal grain and ask you so what is meant by ask you so this is a chemical this chemical used as a preservative for timber that's why preservative for timber that is it is in the form of powder form so as q is a chemical it can be in the formation of 1 is to 3 is to 4 one part of arsenic oxide two parts or three parts of hydrated copper sulfate four parts of potassium so this is called as a ask you so as q it is a chemical it is in the form uh, it is in the form of powder it used as a preservative for timber so what happened it uh, it is a combination as 1 is to 3 is to 4 1 parts of arsenic acid and 3 parts of hydrated sulfate and 4 parts of the potassium dichromate the guidelines for preparation of a mortar is given so what is the is code is is 3350 and 1981 so this is the guidelines for motor uh, preparation of a preparation for motor is given one next for pointing works the ratio of the motor used as 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 3 this is also a direct question and next one sand does not show any bulking so what is meant by bulking of a sand so bulking of a sand means increase in the volume due to moisture content 
increase in the volume due to the moisture content that is called as a bulking of a sand so increase in the moisture content means adding uh, it is absorbing the water from the atmosphere and also the adding a water to preparation so both should be that it should be in the con con correct proportion if it is in then so while adding the moisture content what is and the volume has been increased that is called as a bulking of a sand if it is completely saturated the water is completely saturated that is we can add the correct proportion of the water water what as a it does not show any bulking that is called as a bulking of a sun next one is the varnish which is also called a french varnish and then used for furniture that is a spirit varnish is called as a french varnish or french polish this is a commonly used varnish mainly this varnish can be used for a furniture next formation of a bubbles on painted surface so nothing but formers formation of bubbles on painted surface it is called as a blistering so formation of a bubbles on painted surface so with respect to the water it called as a uh, blistering sometimes what happen in the formation of bubbles will uh, that is if uh, oil or grease are present so at the time what is that is called as a peeling first formed rocks so what is the rocks first formed rocks the rocks i said there are three classification igneous sedimentary and then metamorphic rock the first formed rocks is called as a igneous rock how the rocks can be formed so first formed rocks are nothing but the igneous rocks so how these rocks can be formed means igneous rocks is called as a this can be formed by the solidification of magma solidification of magma so what is meant by magma is a molten material present inside the earth crust so there is a molten material there is a molten material which can be present in inside the earth crust so due to the uh, conditions uh, what happen it can be exposed to the atmosphere so the the which is present inside the earth crust that is that is our molten material is called so due to overheating it can be burst out and comes out to the comes out to the earth surface so through the so through the uh, cracks like the, the through the cracks like volcanoes it can be uh, burst out and come to the uh, atmosphere so come to the earth surface comes to the earth surface so in the earth surface uh, it exposed to the earth surface uh, exposed to the atmospheric condition what happen it started to slowly cooling cooling and deposited slowly cooling and then deposited that is called as a solidification of a magma so what is meant by magma magma is a molten material which is present inside the earth crust so due to the overcanning it can be burst out and comes out to the earth surface through the uh, cracks like volcanoes comes out to the earth surface so it has an overheat and when it exposed to the atmospheric condition what happened it started to slowly gradually cooling down and then deposited at the particular place so that is called as a uh, if it deposited and what happened that is a for rock formation will be there it can be formed a rock that rock is called as a igneous rocks that rock is called as a igneous rocks it is also called as a primary rocks that is a primary rocks that's why we are telling as a first formed rocks so it can be happened due to the volcanoes that is a, that is why it is also called as a eruptive rocks so that is what is the name of igneous rocks primary rocks first formed rocks and also the erratic er rocks so what are the three things are come with that this thing means granite 
cyanide traps these three are the first formed rocks next ice deposited rocks so ice deposited rocks are called as a till so the lewis is wind deposited so wind deposited rocks are called as a lewis ice deposited rocks are called as a till and glacier and frozen so frozen as solidification ice it converted into the water into the ice form uh, it is called frozen glacier means accumulation of ice that is called as a glacier next toughness of stone it should be volume the value of the ah if it is that is a two range one is a 13 another one is a 19 if it is lower than third than this value that is a poor stone if it is greater than 19 that is a good stone so with respect to toughness index so the answer is 13 if it is a low then the value should be is less than 13 next under heat and pressure granite can transform into the that is it is a metamorphic rock so this is a process involved in the metamorphism so due to the heat and pressure what can be granite can be converted into the knees g to g this is usually asked the question the frequently asked the question so g to g granite to knees if this question will be count without knowing any doubt we can form the knees so under heat and pressure granite transform into the knees g to g Aggregated which is called uh, coarse aggregated it is completely retained on so the it is the range is a 4.75 completely retained is completely that is CC that is called as a coarse aggregate less than 4.75 mm is fine aggregate so that is called as a 4.75 mm next soundness of the cement soundness of the cement means we are checking of a unburned lime so if a presence of unburned lime is high the what happened cracks can be happened so it can be tested by using a leach at layer apparatus Volume of one bag of cement, this is also weighing 50 kg, is 0.0345 meter cube. Next, the steel used in the reinforced cement concrete work. Once again, okay. So, which steel can be used in the reinforced cement concrete work? So, that is called as a mild steel. So, reinforced concrete work, we are using a mild steel. And next, the carbon content is in structural steel. So, carbon content which is less than, that is also up to 0.25 percentage. That is called as a mild steel. So, what is there? The steel used in the reinforced, so which is called, which which steel is we can use for a carbon uh, structural steel that is called as a mild steel. So this is a ratio is in the limit of up to 0.25 percentage. Then the structural steel is also have the range of 0.10 to 0.25 percentage. Next the yield strength and also tensile strength of low carbon it can be so now without knowing anything vanadium when if you add the vanadium it can be used for increasing the strength and also the tensile strength veneering so what is meant by veneering means it is a process it can be thin layer of superior wood glued to inferior wood so it is called as the, the process of making a venous so it is in the making into the industrial timber. What is meant by uh, wiener in the sense that is called as a industrial trimmer. The process of making a wiener is called as a wienering. 
so in that what happened we can make in the thin layer of superior wood to inferior wood a pointed arc which forms a isosceles or equilateral triangle generally knows as so the pointed arc is also called as a conic arc so this arc what had can be it can be touches into the apex of the triangle so this arc can be touches into the apex of the triangle uh, it can be formed whether it is equilateral or isosceles triangle so this pointed it should be in the pointed form pointed arc which form isosceles or equilateral triangle that is called as a lancet arc snow sum snow sum is called as a cement paint and also the colored cement next asphalt is a mixture of bitumen and inert mineral matter inert mineral matter tendency of mineral to split along a certain plane so that mineral is split along a certain plane that is a rocks can be formed it can be split it can be split a particular line it can be split it can be like splitted into the another mineral that is called as a cleavage the compound formed within the 24 hours after the addition of water to cement so the compound which can be added to that uh, it formed it a 24 hour after the addition of water to cement what is the compound we can add in this tricalcium aluminate next the formation of a very loose moss of a plastered surface due to the poor bond between the successive uh, coats so what is why we have seen blistering means formation of the bubbles uh, on the surface that is blistering at the same time the formation of a bubbles on the oil or greased surface if presence of oil or grease is called as a peeling so what is meant by uh, there is a poor bond made that is adhesion adhesion is very less there is a bond the bond between the paint and also the surface is very less so that is called as a flaking fine earthenware which is white uh, okay which is white thin and semi transparent that is called as a porcelain so this is a very thin and also the a uh, white and also semi transparent the brick molded with a double molded with a double boldness on one end is known as a. so what is meant by bullnose means uh, there is a bullnose means one end curved that is called as a bullnose double bullnose means any two ends any two ends are curved that is called as a double bullnose that is also called as a cow nose bull nose in the means any one of the ends has a just curved uh, brick has four ends any one of the end has a curved that is called as a bull nose and then uh, two uh, ends has curved that is called as a cow nose a material which can be beaten into the uh, the material which can be beaten into the thin sheets or leaves is known as the malleable material silica is melt so silica can be melt at a particular temperature of 1730 degrees celsius so here the pro, that principle is there silica uh, which can be melted 1700 degree where it is it is in the brick so another type of question fusing temperature of a silica in bricks that is also a yeah, 1073 degree celsius but so silica can be fused at the 1730 degree celsius burning temperature of a brick is 
thousand hundred degrees Celsius. We can heat a brick only at the range of a thousand hundred degrees Celsius only. But silica fuse only at a thousand seven hundred thirty degrees. How it can be made? It can be uh, how it can be possible? Because if it is more than thousand hundred degrees Celsius, what happen? Overburned bricks will be formed. That can be used only for a aggregate only. We can use that brick as a surki. So. Uh, we cannot able to heat more than 1100 degrees Celsius. So what happened in the sense uh, for uh, adjusting this, uh, for adjusting this one, that means adjusting this one means silica can be fused under the temperature of uh, 100 degrees Celsius. Silica can be fused only at the temperature of 1700 degrees Celsius. Because of the burning temperature of a brick, we can, it can be low as the temperature, it can be adjust and it adapt with the brick. So for that we can add a line. If you add lime to the brick, so silica can be adopted with the degree of 100 degrees Celsius. That's why we can tell it as a lime acts as a flux. Clear? Thank you. So uh, we have seen totally the 50, question, 50 questions in the BM. So these questions are repeatedly asked. So if you overthrow these questions, you can be able to uh, attempt a questions in the uh, upcoming examinations so these are the uh, I, 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 I thought I covered all the th topics so these are the questions we can repeatedly ask it and which of the things are most important question that are the things I have taken so uh, we are uh, we discussed these uh, totally the 50 questions so out of these 50 questions we can expect more number of questions from that uh, from our examination so you just go through these 15 questions uh, and then you will uh, have a, a chance to attempt all the questions from the BM thank you